hello, Facebook. I'm back. And I can't get over how cute Captain Kitty is in the background. So um, as you can see, today's subject is face your fears. And I'm going to talk to you about anxiety and also just be ha having fear around doing different things in your life. Um, anxiety and just general fear are kind of two different things, but they can go hand in hand. They certainly have for me. So um, definitely close to my heart, this subject. Um, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Amanda Marie. I am a musician and artist and health advocate. Um, I've gotten into healthy cooking and a health journey uh, on my own, uh, of my own and I'm here to share what I've learned and also to learn what you've learned on your journey. So um, without further ado, <laughs> here comes Captain Kitty to help out. Um, let's get into this. So with um, just general fear, um, in my life I know that uh, anything that I've wanted to do has come with um, some fear behind it. Like, well, what if I'm not good enough to do this? What if, um, let's just go back to my music background, for instance. Um, getting in a band and starting a band and being on stage and all of that has its own um, set of fears. I had crippling stage fright for many years and um, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of amazed at how I just did it anyway. I, I, a lot of times I wouldn't even eat the day of a performance because I would have the dry heaves all day and just be flipping out. My sister always knew because she could tell I was hyperventilating. She's like, be okay. And I'm like, I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, it's, it's actually kind of, I mean, it's pure comedy at times, just thinking about how I remember one time I was backstage and, um, I hadn't, this was later, years later in LA and, and, um, I was performing at this awesome club called El Cid, one of my favorite places to perform. And for some reason I was just having major anxiety and, um, I was talking to one of the performers. We had we had go go dancers with this particular act, and they're like, "Are you okay, honey?" And I'm like, and I like run to the bathroom stall, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the person's like, "Ew." <laughs> so it's just like it's one of those things that is so um, human, you know, like you just throwing up is gross and it's horrid and it sucks and getting the dry hues before a performance or just feeling completely paralyzed before getting on stage is super scary. So um, this is the thing. I uh, ever, Just about everything I've ever done, I, I've, I don't know why I have always wanted to do stuff that entails things like getting in front of a giant group of people. But it's almost like I just know that there's something like once I was on stage, there was something I was giving to the audience. You know, it's this, it's this beautiful exchange of energy and it's very cathartic for the audience as well as me on stage. And um, there are other instances in my life where, for instance, I was teaching theatrical makeup. Um, I, I have a degree in theater. And so my emphasis was uh, costume and makeup. So there was a point where I was teaching these huge classes of like young people, like 14 year, like 50, 14 year olds stage makeup and 14 year olds are very intimidating because they're loud and they're, you know, unruly. And, and I, I would just, just about freak out every time I had to teach one. But once I got up there and started engaging with the students, it was just so, so rewarding to me. So this is the thing. Anything you want to do, it doesn't matter if it has to do with getting up and public speaking. That's, you know, that that's doesn't, there's so many other things in life besides that that you'll face fear around. For instance, 
starting a new job that maybe you you have the skill set but you're you know it's a new place you haven't done this before and you're feeling anxious about it it's almost like if you if if you don't change nothing else does so it's kind of like if you need to do this thing to get this new job and, and just walk into the position even though you might not have everything in line you do it anyway you walk through that fear and you do it anyway it's not a real fear it's it's a it's it's like it's not a real fear it's you're not going to get eaten by a tiger but this is the thing <laughs> because we're you know these caveman creatures still that's what happens to our bodies we feel like we're going to get eaten by a tiger even though it's just walking into a new situation so this is the thing too the more you walk into these new situations or new things that you want to do the more you get comfortable with being uncomfortable that's the best way to put it you are like okay well this isn't any anytime you really want to do something anything really you know that's not in your comfort zone that's the only way amazing stuff happens is if you just walk out of that comfort zone and you can start with small stuff um you know whether it's um you know starting some kind of new program or class or um way of eating or way of exercising anything new you know it could be these small steps you take maybe um Maybe you need to make a phone call about something. It could be anything. Maybe you need to make a doctor's appointment. That's something. Sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, I don't really want to go to the doctor. I don't know what's going on, whatever. You know, any of these things, that is a step in the right direction of facing your fear, whatever that is. So um, I don't really, I'm, uh, you know, people who know me really well know that I, I don't go out a lot. I don't, I'm very much a homebody. I very much love being at my house, I love doing stuff around the house. I would, I'm a morning person. I'd re much rather stay in at night. But I also know that um, I feel really good about myself when I get out from time to time and meet with other people. And it, so last night was a good example. A dear friend of mine was having um, his birthday party. And it was in downtown LA, and I don't go down there a lot, but it was at this really amazing place that I'd never been before called Clifton's. It was really cool. It's if you like Twin Peaks and you like uh, natural history museums, it is the place for you. And cafeterias. It's like cafeteria mixed with it's it's the most bizarre place I've ever been, and it's fabulous. But in any case, I got reacquainted with some of my old friends and I got out and I, you know, so it's like, okay, I did want to do it, but when it came time to actually go, I was kind of tired and I didn't feel like it, but I knew that I had already made that commitment that I was going to go and that I was going to get out there and be with people. And so, you know, I'm so glad I did it, of course. And it was wonderful to see my friend that I hadn't seen in years. And, um, and then I connected with other people that I hadn't seen and it was really really fun so This might not be a point of anxiety for you, but it is for me uh, Anytime I'm gonna be somewhere where there's gonna be a lot of people which there were a lot of people in that place And it was very loud and very stimulating and I get overstimulated easy. So um, So anyway, um, I'm not really pay I just noticed the comments. I'm not even paying attention. I am I did not plan uh I don't have notes this time. I didn't plan this. This is just freestyle because this is something that's been coming up in another group that I'm working with. Um, a lot of anxiety around trying new things. And um, so I am going to talk a, 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 a little bit about how I've learned to manage my anxiety because I have had crippling anxiety. Like I said, I had stage fright, but not only that, there was a time when I could barely leave my house. Um, <clears throat> because my panic attacks were so severe, I just didn't want to go through it. I could barely even have someone come into my environment without completely flipping out. Uh, just having a major panic attack, and if you've ever had a panic attack, uh, the best example I've heard of what a panic attack is like 
is it's like, you know, when you're about to get in a car wreck and you have that huge ad adrenaline rush. Um, and then you're like, oh, I'm out of danger. Okay. And you start calming down again. Well, an anxiety attack is having a huge ad adrenaline rush with nothing happening. Like all of a sudden, like, Sometimes you can, like, it'll build, like, you'll get somewhere and you, like, start feeling kind of anxious. Like, you feel like your collar is way up here around your throat. You're like, what's going on? Oh, my God. No. Um, but so then you, or, so, but sometimes I'll just be sitting there and all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, I am just flipping out. I feel like I'm in the middle of a full-blown adrenaline rush over nothing. So... What I do now is different than what I used to do because I don't have them as often. But I have learned to, um, one, if I'm really feeling, I, I'm not really afraid to tell people I'm totally flipping out now. Like, that's one thing. And it, that kind of cuts it in half right there. If, I, like, if I'm with friends and I'm like, you know what? I'm totally having a panic attack. I need to go outside for a minute or I need to regroup or I need to leave. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to tell people anymore. I just, I really don't care. I need to do what I need to do to feel comfortable. And that helps. The other thing I can do is really just get in the space of realizing what it is, that it is a panic attack. I'm not dying. Nothing bad is going to happen. I'm just going to feel weird. It's usually panic attacks only last, it, it, it might sound kind of long, but like a half an hour. But in general, I find that if you can get in the space of realizing what's going on with yourself, you can rein it in to five minutes. I, I've been able to rein mine into a few minutes of, of like really feeling freaked out and being like, okay, this is, you're having your panic attack. Just there, nothing bad is going to happen. You're just feeling this, you know, just feel it. And then you go through it and you're like, oh, okay. Um, if I'm having fear or anxiety around a certain situation or like I'm feeling overwhelmed because I have a lot going on in my life at the time and I, I have a lot of stuff to accomplish, but I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, I'm looking at it globally like I have this mountain, I'm never going to be able to blah, 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 whatever. And I just start getting into that space of telling myself, oh, my gosh, you're not going to be able to accomplish this too much stuff. Blah. I just get a piece of paper out. I write down the most important things that come to mind and then tackle those and forget about everything else. And then also realize that um, not everything is going to be done at once and not everything it, uh, needs to be done right this second. Um, so it's 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 like, OK, I can accomplish this and then later I'll evaluate the next steps or whatever it is so that I'm not sitting there going, oh my gosh, I have this, you know, I'm never going to get all this stuff done or I'm never going to be able to accomplish my goals or whatever it is. Um, uh, another big one, if I'm in the middle of a, a like a, a panic attack, um, I'll, I'll try to take some deep breaths that sometimes help, helps walking around, going out to nature. Uh, it, it's really grounding. All of a sudden, you're just like, whoosh, or yeah, like you could just walk. Um, I remember uh, I recently went to a, it happens to me in restaurants a lot. Like, I, it's just because it's an old pattern. I used to have a lot of anxiety around food and eating. And so, restaurants, it comes out sometimes. I was out eating with my sister, and uh, for some reason, you know, she could tell. She, she knows me so she, she's always in love with you. You look like you're having a panic attack. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm not feeling too comfortable, actually. You're right. And I swear the minute I, I, like, I told her I would go get the parking voucher, and that would help me kind of like, whoosh. and I swear the minute I went outside, it's fine. It was almost like I just need to get air, get grounded, see a tree, see a bunch of weird people walking around. I'm like, okay, fine, got it. And I got back from the restaurant later, and it kind of came back. I don't know. It's just like, and then I'm like, okay, well, whatever. I'm just going to deal with whatever it is. So um, that tends to work, get, getting out for a minute, breathing, um, excusing myself to the restroom to just kind of <gasps> get a hold of things. <laughs> um, the main the reason I want to go over this stuff with everybody and to talk to everybody about this is that it's completely normal. I, I, I don't know of anybody who doesn't, like, 
have to work on it or who hasn't worked on it, you know, um, you know, people uh, who are complete introverts, I, I'm a complete introvert. I, I really don't get my energy from other people. I get it from going inward and shutting down and hanging out by myself or well, Captain Kitty left, whatever with hanging out with my cat is nice. But, um, but it's, it's something that, you know, it doesn't necessarily come natural and a lot of wonderful things and wonderful things we want to do with our lives don't come natural. I just don't want you to get stuck where you think that this is how I am and I can't move past this because you can and you don't have to like, you, you don't have to be stuck. Um, and, and like I said, do little things. If you are feeling stuck or if you are feeling like too afraid to do something you want to do. And another thing I want to say is sometimes people are afraid to do something that they want to do because they're afraid of what other people are going to think. And who cares? Who cares? Uh, honestly, the thing is with, with worrying about what other people's opinions are of you, it's none of your business. And, um, you know, it's always worth a try. It's always worth trying to do something. Even these Facebook lives, you know, the first few times I did this, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. It, they're funny to look at actually. I don't, I still, I, I don't care if I know what I'm doing. It doesn't matter because I'm getting out here and I'm trying to, to help people. And, and it's like, it's, it, it's another way of facing something and moving forward. And, um, I just don't want you to get caught up on the opinions of others because honestly, if somebody's not like in the doing in the realm of what you're doing, whether it's, this is something I, I run into like with, with musician friends and stuff too. People are like, Oh, you know, reviews, blah, 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 blah. If it bothers you, don't even read them. And honestly, if, if someone's not doing what you're doing, like, you know, a lot of times people who are, what they would call haters or people who are trolls or any of that. They're just procrastinating. They must be bored enough with their own life that they need to make a comment about you and blah, 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 whatever. You look weird. You're, blah, blah, blah. You're wrong. It's like, who cares? You know, um, you know, what are you doing? You know, it's like, and, and this is the thing too, is most people who are actually doing something with their, their life or they are doing something in the realm of what you're doing, for instance, again, like music or something like that, they'll usually have something constructive to say and they're in the realm of what you're doing. So you know that they, ha there's maybe a little validity to what they're talking about. But most people who are trolling or hating or any of that, there's no reason to even listen to them because their their voice honestly for me just doesn't even count, uh, you know? And um, so never let the opinions of others get in your way of what you wanna do. Um, because it's just, um, it doesn't matter. And what you have to offer is probably more important than you, than you may know. You you may resonate with, your, this is the thing, you're gonna resonate with your own tribe and they're going to love you. If you have stuff to say, if you have things to offer, if you want to write books, if you want to do movies, if you want to do music, if you want to be a health coach, if you, any of these things, if you want to uh, be a, a freaking hip hop dancer on the streets of Hollywood, you, you know, I mean, it doesn't, any of these things, just do any of the things that you want to do without letting fear get in the way because fear will happen. It'll come up. doesn't matter. Like you might get more used to it, but it's always going to come up. Any new thing you try, any new thing you conquer, it's going to come up and you're just going to have to walk through it. So if any of this resonates, if any of this, uh, if you have techniques that you use to walk through your fear, I would love to hear about it. It's inspiring to me. Um, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that, that, even if just one of these things helps you to move through something you're afraid to do today, that would be so amazing. And um, I'm just grateful to be here to talk with everybody. And I'm going to go ahead and 
post this on my personal page too as soon as I'm off of here. Um, I love you all, and I will see you next time. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. Okay, bye.